コーナー日本ピアブレットシューティングジム大宮百八十センチ九十八点四キロシュートヘビー級チャンピオンエンセル伊野さあメインエベントです遠征井上がランディークートアと相まみえます聞きましょう坂本さんはいちょっと柳に風っていう感じですねあこれ十時狙ってますよあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっよく見ると。Um, I didn't really think nothing. I thought, oh wow, damage in Japan, okay. I didn't think it was going to be like this worldwide big disaster thing. So the next step was、um, I figured, okay, everything's going cool.、Uh, that was a huge earthquake. I hope no, many people didn't die. And I just was kind of like that. And then I got a call from a friend that had an inside with military and said they get out of Saitama because there's a big、um, radioactive leak that no, they're not telling anyone about. And for some reason, as soon as that explosion happened, there was a big wave of radioactivity that came through and even came all the way down to Tokyo. So, when the, my friend told me that I, you know, radioactivity,、I'm, when people fear things, it's the unknown. And I had known nothing about it except it causes cancer and it'll burn people up and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, the first thing I did was the funniest thing is I got in my car and I drove down to Kyoto because I have a gym there. And I was planning to go there a week after, but I figured I'd just go early. So, I went down to Kyoto. My mom and them were calling me, begging me to fly out to get back home and, and, or to go to Okinawa. They'll pay my trip to Okinawa. And,、uh, you know, I, I had mixed feelings because、um, this is my home. You know, Japan's my home. And I felt like, you know, when Japan is, I love Japan as it is. I love the people. I love the country, the, the tradition. And I lived there and I made my living there for 21 years. I'm not going to pick up and leave at the first disaster. I felt like I'd be abandoning Japan. So I decided to stay. And as I was in Kyoto, I was talking to a lot of my. It's funny, you know, the Yakuza people and the gangsters are the first people up there, you know. And I have a lot of friends there. And I actually had an appearance at a, a gangster event the next week. So I called the guy, is it still on? He said, nope, it's not on anymore. I said, oh, why not? He goes, everybody's up north. And I was like, whoa. And that's why I started thinking, you know what? 
these guys that I know are going up north to assist, and, I, and then that's when the news hit that people are homeless, people, are, thousands of people died. And I had this really weird feeling in me, and I felt like I'm driving this way where these guys are driving that way to help. I felt like a coward, you know. So I thought, okay, I have three people I know up north. Um, you know, I'm not this huge cement, uh, humanitarian that wants to help the animals, wants to do this. You know, it's, it's coming out like that now. But I'm not that. I'm not this guy that love and peace. I'm going to help everybody, you know. So my basic movement at the beginning was to help the people I knew. So I went up. I got in my car against the the the, the hopes of my mom. Them, They didn't want me to go. But I decided I'm going to go up. I went up and I took off to the north and seen the people that I um, knew. And I visited the first guy in Kodiyama that wasn't, was radiation was a problem and the earthquake and his whole apartment was trash. So I helped him clean up. And then I moved up into um, Sendai. I knew a person in Sendai. Uh, she was okay. Um, her apartment was trash, but she was okay. And because I was in Sendai, I figured I'd take a 40 minute drive to the coastline. In Miyagi and check it out and that was the first time I realized how bad it was when I drove to the coast and it was as you get close it was like you see like cars big tow trucks like overturned and then as you get closer to this the ocean it's like I don't know how do you, how do you explain it? it feels like it's like a big rice field with debris on it like everything was cleared out and I was like oh my god I'm saying okay I got a last friend in Iwate which was another maybe five hours away. So I drove Iwate and this guy's house was trashed. The whole town was, and the body, there were bodies still out in the water. There was a body in the tree, you know, there's, I mean, this, I felt like I was driving into a movie. And right there, something hit me like, you know, I'm driving in this car in air condition and these people are, I see these people trying to pick up stuff, like leftover stuff. I see people sitting, down blank. I know there's a lot of lives lost and I thought, you know, there's, I gotta try and help. So I started helping out my friends, those three guys, those three people, bringing money to them, buying the appliances and helping the guy in Iwate with his friends. He, there, he was actually also in the evacuation center. So I started visiting those people, got to know them and from there I took off, you know, from there, um, this is when I realized that, that something in my life is I already knew that, I don't know if you know this, but it's always nice to receive things, especially things you want. Like if someone buys you that camera or somebody takes you on a nice trip, it's always nice. But the real joy is not the joy of receiving, but the joy of giving. And for me, until that moment, I always believed that, but I always believed to give to someone that you know or someone you care about. I never thought that you could receive the joy of giving by giving to people that you have never met or you've met for the first time. Shoes. Get some of these, this chocolate cakes that you bought. <laughs> oh yeah, check this out. This is where we need to be. And when I started helping these people, I went to the evacuation centers. The first, you know, Japanese, they don't talk, they don't try to ask for things. So their first thing is, Daijobo. And you know they're not Daijobo. You know, Daijobo means it's okay, I'm okay. But it, it's not Daijobo. You lost everything. You lost your family members. You're living in cardboard boxes. You know, the Japanese people don't ask. They don't ask for sympathy. They're strong inside. They have that Yamato Damashi feeling. So they didn't say anything. So it was hard at first because I was walking around the place trying to help. And they were like, Daijobo, Daijobo. And I was like, wow, what am I going to do? So it was hard at first. But as I always visited, frequently visited them and brought up stuff without them asking and just laying it on a table and having them line up and pick out what they need. They started talking to me to a point where when I left, they would come up and a lady would come and say, can you get size six shoes? I need shoes. And they don't have shoes. They don't have anything, you know? So then it, that's when the movement all happened. And I started 
experiencing that joy of giving to people that I don't know. And it was weird, you know, because everyone on Facebook sees it like I'm doing this great thing and helping people, but I feel like I'm doing this great thing for myself because to have the joy of giving, to be able to find out from someone that they, you know, if I was in the in my town or someone's birthday, I mean, even in a birthday, you don't know what someone really wants, you know? And you finally hit on the spot and you give that guy a birthday present and they're all happy. It's like, oh, you feel so happy because they're looking, you can see on their face like, oh, I always wanted this, you know, it makes it so happy. And to be able to experience that joy isn't something that you frequent in life. So for me, I felt like I was, I got a gift because there was a thousands of people up in the north that needed stuff like soap, socks, water, food, you know, I mean, I felt like I was in a position where like a like a lot like a like, like Las Vegas where money's falling all over me. Like this I got all these opportunities to make all these people happy and get the joy of giving. So easy. So that's what that's how it started actually. And I started I used my own money and I started going up. Kept I made I made frequent trips up there. I had some people and I call family, like brothers to me that would meet me up there or or come with me. And that's how the whole movement started and Till today, I'm on my ninth trip now. I've oh. been up there nine times already, so my tenth one will be when I get back. So, you know, that's that's how everything kind of evolved. In these evacuation centers, when you talk to these people, you can, you're becoming, you start relating to them on a real, like a, you know, on a level that it's hard to explain because you feel their sorrow a lot more. You feel their, their gratitude when they smile and tell you thank you. They're no longer these people that got hit by the tsunami. They become people that you you know, people that you see as what could I could have simply been you. I might say I'm dedicating this part of my life because I I've sold the animals that I loved. Um, I'm getting rid of all my animals. I'm literally draining my accounts. Um, but it, it's become something for me it's become more than helping the people you know first it started off with helping the people I know and then when I went up there and you see the devastation I got to mingle with the people talk with the people see their spirits see the happy people see the positives that work through the hard times see the ones that are down see the ones that don't talk and just sit and stare into space and that ignited a little fire in my heart that wanted to help. The feeling that I get when I help these people, the satisfaction I get when I I buy these shoes and this, this lady comes and grabs the shoes and grabs it to her chest and holds it and walks away and thanks me for it. It is it's priceless, it's priceless. The, the, the return I get from this is priceless.